Are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me tonight? Are you sorry we drifted apart? Does your Hi guys. Hi everyone. Hey, welcome back to Significant Lovers. We are your hosts. I'm Mel. I'm Kel. And I'm Caitlin. Kate, you need one syllable. One syllable. Nickname. Okay, fine. I'm Kate. Just kidding. Okay. I'm Kate. <laughs> no, but she's she's Caitlin. Does that make you uncomfortable, Kate? No, it doesn't make me uncomfortable. I just never really had a nickname, you know? What are you talking mm-hmm. about? I like that. I like that you go by Caitlin. Yeah, yeah like teachers cool. in school always ask me, like, oh, is it Kate? Is it Katie? Is it what? And I'm like, no, it's just Caitlin. Well, th- but that is not true, though, because you did go by Katie for many years. Did I? When? As a kid. Well, I don't think it It wasn't official. Like, it wasn't at school. Or yeah. Anything. No, it wasn't, like, self-imposed. Right. Like, I wasn't asking people to call me that. Well, we're talking about a Kate today. We are talking about a oh, Kate. True. That's so true. Today, we are talking about Kate Middleton and Prince William, another royal couple. Oh. But first, before we get into the episode, I loved our little trivia last week, so I have a couple questions for you guys about past episodes. <gasps> Yay! Yay! All right. Let's do it. Question one. Name the actress who sparked engagement rumors when she attended a Dior fashion party with her boyfriend and donned a ring on that finger. Uh... Context clues. Dior fashion party. Is it F- FK Twigs? <laughs> Close. Is it oh. um, Suki Waterhouse? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. One point for Yay! Caitlin. All right. Dior because Robert Pattinson was the face of Dior? Yes. Yep. Oh, I didn't Dior catch wrong. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will say Kelly kind of gave you the push with the FK Twigs. No, I but... literally... No, I... <laughs> Was thinking Suki ha- no. Waterhouse, <laughs> but I couldn't think of her name, so it took me mm. a second. I was thinking oh. of Suki, I just couldn't think of her name. Okay, <laughs> okay. Okay, in honor of the election <laughs> next week, name the oh celebrity boy. who once blamed an election for an episode <laughs> for an episode of infidelity. infidelity. Oh, John Lennon, John Lennon, John yep. Lennon. Yep. Fuck. I, <laughs> I should have gotten that. First I thought Paul Simon, but then I was like, no, it's John Lennon. Yeah. Mm. Yep. He didn't like oh the results I, of the election, and then he cheated on Yoko Ono. <laughs> I saw something the other Crazy. day that was like some Entertainment Weekly or something they are posting new reveal that John Lennon cheated on his wife on I know, the I saw that too. day of the election or something. Like, new scoop or whatever. I'm like, this is old We've news. Known. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. this has been known. Like, this is not <laughs> new information. I even commented. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> you did? Yeah, because I don't know. Well, like... if you listen to Significant Lovers, you would have known this. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it's annoying when they post things as if it's, like, new information. It's like, people mm-hmm. who are aware of these types of things, obviously... Would know it's not. Like, if you're in the fandom, you would know it's not new information, you know? Yeah, it's like as if the editor yeah. writing that just learned it, so it was new yeah. to them. Yeah. But... Like, it was just uncovered. Yeah. yeah. Okay, final question. Kate's winning. Okay, but this is double or nothing, okay? <gasps> okay. So you could tie it. You could tie it. <laughs> no fair. <laughs> Name the actor who got drunk on too much tequila and impulsively showed up at his girlfriend's doorstep to confess his love to her for the first time. Oh, this sounds Ashton so Kutcher. familiar. Yep. Ding, 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 ding. What? Yay! <laughs> oh, my it's a God. Tie. I have my hands in the air. <laughs> <laughs> this is not fair. Good job, Cal. That came to you quickly. I demand a recount. Before we get into it, we want to thank some of our newest patrons to the pod. So these are people who are supporting us on Patreon. If you guys want to listen to additional episodes, definitely feel free to check that out. So thank you, Mark, Hebra, Emily, Anna, Diana, and that's it. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. I also wanted to say thank you to our listener, Saki, for sending us a gift recently super generous and just made our week yes month whatever so thank you so much thank you so much that was so 
serendipitous. It was a particularly tough day and just the kindness of a stranger that was mm. super, super sweet. Okay, so Kate and William. Mel, how would you describe this couple in three words? I would say charming, supportive, mm -hmm. and I struggled with this last word, how to describe it, but I came to the word measured. Okay. Basically, they're the opposite of like impulsive, which a lot of couples we have covered have been. Mm -hmm. They really, this couple takes their time. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes that but, can be good. So mm -hmm. I guess we can see how that works out for them or maybe not. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Or maybe not. Sorry. I mean, once before I read a like fictionalized version of their mm. love story. I think it was called like the Royal We or something. I don't remember who it was by. I didn't particularly care for the book, but um, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't think it was particularly that great but i did think it was an interesting love stories but i am interested in hearing like the actual version of it rather than the fictionalized version you know so i'm very excited yeah and a lot of the information that i'm going to talk about i got from the book the making of a royal of romance by katie nicole which came out from when they were getting married i have never watched the season of the crown that covers their relationship or i know there's a couple movies depicted about them too i've seen the movie the prince in me by <laughs> that stars what julia styles wasn't that way before way, then? well that i was. think i think that was around when they were dating because it's like about a normal girl who goes to college and then falls in love with a prince which is kind of what this story is that we're going to talk about today and oh i should tell you guys this is part one because there's a lot to say about this couple so we're just going to cover their courtship in this episode and then next episode we're going to talk about their marriage Ooh. Ooh, okay but, okay so who is prince william he was born <laughs> on june 21st 1982 in london we covered his father and his stepmother before check that out that's i think episode what is that called like episode six or something something like that yeah <laughs> charles and camilla one of our favorites <laughs> so he My was guilty pleasure mm -hmm. yes yeah obviously he was born to charles and diana his full name is william arthur philip louis and of course wow. he was born with an immense amount of pressure and responsibility as the heir to the british throne so even though he did always grow up with nannies who were a big part of his life his mom diana was more hands-on than royal mothers typically are. So William actually got to be the first royal baby brought on a goodwill tour when he traveled with his parents to New Zealand and Australia at just nine months old. And then wow. when he was two, his brother Harry was born and the family all lived in a very beautiful estate called Highgrove House. When they became adults, I think the impression is that William was the more reserved and mature brother, which I think is true now, but when they were little, it definitely was the reverse. William was more mm -hmm. rambunctious, and Harry was actually a lot more quiet and reserved. And mm, William I've was, read that. yeah, William was very like attention seeking, extroverted, mischievous, and the queen like kind of be a little nervous about that. But he's like four. Give him a break. <laughs> All kids are gonna be a little acting crazy, you know. Yeah, yeah. But of course, William's home life was not easy his parents had a very toxic relationship and they fought constantly and the boys would often have to witness their mother breaking down in tears sometimes every single day which mm. is, is a lot for a kid definitely impacts you know mm -hmm. how they view romantic relationships as william got older diana would particularly confide in him which was just an immense burden for a little boy to take on and i think that is how he started to become a lot more reserved and quiet and sensitive compared to mm. his brother i mean she was so young mm -hmm. and i think not in a great emotional space so i can imagine him like being the oldest almost feeling like he needs to take care of his mom mm -hmm. or something even though he's a kid yeah. i don't know that's just what i yeah. kind of picked up from reading about the royal family i can also see it being really like isolating especially for the family where they might not have like too many close friends that they can be around with all the time so maybe the only person that diana could confide in mm -hmm. would be her kids and so that was kind of the only option so it probably wasn't the best option but it was the only option and it's not healthy for anybody 
Yeah, I don't blame her at all. I mean, also, it's like she feels repressed by the establishment, the palace, Mm -hmm. whatever. But she knows that her boys are growing up in that environment, too. And so she's probably also nervous that they're going to one day maybe even turn on her, too. So I could see wanting to, like, kind of shape their opinions early on in her Mm -hmm. to be sympathetic towards her. But he got a uh, nice escape from everything that was going on at home when he was eight years old. He w- went off to boarding school at Ludgrove School, where he played soccer and swimming and basketball, clay pigeon shooting and cross country. He's He was a very active boy. And at this school, he was very sheltered from photographers and newspapers, and it was a safe place for him. And then when he was 10, his parents sadly separated, and Diana moved into an apartment at Kensington Palace. And... During those years, she definitely tried to give William and Harry as much as a normal childhood as possible. Obviously, it's kind of impossible in their position, but, you know, she would take them to McDonald's and amusement parks and the beach and stuff. And compared to other royals, like, they definitely lived a more grounded upbringing, Mm -hmm. I guess. Then at 13, he went off to a different boarding school called Eaton College, where he was a little bit less protected. He was frequently in the newspapers and was super embarrassed by all the media attention. When he first arrived on campus, two documentaries came out the same week, one called The Making of a King and one called Inside Eaton, which was just about him arriving at school. And he was so embarrassed by it, and he urged all of his friends to not watch them. It's a good thing he kind of has a step up from his father, because I think his dad didn't really have many friends at this point Mm. in time. And... True. <laughs> he was similarly embarrassed by being the prince and all that, but he like he was a social pariah. So I think it's good at least that William had to step up and at least having some friends. So there's that. Y- yeah, I get the sense like William sometimes feels like an outsider and embarrassed, but he is pretty popular. That's good. And then <laughs> also at 13, Diana's famous Martin Bashir interview came out. And hmm. uh, Diana warned William that he had nothing to worry about at all. But when he watched this interview, he felt super betrayed. And he was just shocked that she would even let TV cameras into their life in such a personal way. And he had heard things in the interview that he had never even known before, like Diana's affair. <gasps> and sadly, he didn't really ever forgive her, according to this book um, by Nicole. What's her name? Katie Nicole. And then sadly, just two How years. How old was he? He was oh, 13. Sorry. All of his friends at school are watching this interview. That, mm, that was yeah. super hard for him. And then just two years later, when he was 15... He was woken up by his father, Charles, at Balmoral Castle in Scotland to receive the devastating news that his mom had died in a car accident. We all kind of know the story as the driver was fleeing photographers. And to this day, both William and Harry still very much blame the press and the paparazzi for what happened to their mother. And Mm -hmm. obviously that will come into play in this story with Mm -hmm. um, William and, you know, the different people that he well mostly kate uh (laughs) and how kate becomes subject to the same media attention so tragic Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so sad i know i was like kind of going down a rabbit hole reading about diana's death and it's awful for some reason every time i think about diana's death i always think william is way younger than 15 Mm, harry's really young he's like 12 13 years old when it happens so Mm -hmm. sad (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, It must be very complicated, especially since he was already having these complicated feelings of having betrayal from Diana and having the mm -hmm. feelings about his dad's infidelity and then his mom's infidelity and Mm -hmm. the press and all these feelings. Yeah, it's sad because that was happening at such a formative time in his life and it's natural Mm -hmm. when you're a teenager to be kind of annoyed with your parents, but he wasn't really given the opportunity to work that out with his mom Mm -hmm. or like get more closure from it or perspective at the time like Mm -hmm. it's just kind of that story ended you know was cut short and super (sighs) sad yeah you probably think you have your whole life to work out these problems and issues with your parents Mm -hmm. with but unfortunately for william he (laughs) wasn't able to work that out with his mother 
Yeah, it's so sad. And that probably uh, in turn had even more of an impact then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has said that the day, like, well, the immediate, like, I guess, you know, after his mom died, it was just very dark days of grief. And now he has said that he doesn't really wallow in it as much anymore. It seems like he's been able to find some some peace with it. But I think both him and Harry have some PTSD from it, especially when it comes mm-hmm. to the press. I bet. Mm-hmm. But so, okay, so before meeting Kate, William was quite the bachelor from an early age. I always think of, <laughs> what is it, this, the Princess Diaries, too, when he's on the screen and they're like, I yeah. just like to look at him. <laughs> Every, everybody loved Prince William. So when he was 16, he had his first girlfriend. Her name was Jekka Craig. Remember that name, Jekka, Okay. Jekka. She'll come up. Jekka. She'll come up later. But he met okay. her while in Kenya doing volunteer environmental work. She was an environmental conservationist, and they worked together there. Their families had like kind of known each other. Was she older? Ah, uh, no. She was also pretty young too. I don't know like how she got in the position to be honest to be like <laughs> doing that work, but they. Both fell in, very impressive. Yeah, they both fell in love with Kenya and each other, and they had a, quite the summer lady. romance. And was she English? I think so, yes. Oh, okay. When he was 18, he had his next girlfriend, a childhood friend, who he had another summer fling with. That's kind of his MO. This was just after finishing high school, and they connected at the local... Well, not the local. It's like a high end. (laughs) (laughs) It's not like the down polo club. It's like the royal polo club. Oh, that's how Charles met Camilla, Mm -hmm. I think. Wow. Apparently, though, this was a really sweet and innocent love affair. Oh, I should mention her name was Rose Farquhar. Farquad? Yeah, Farquhar. (laughs) Wait. Farquhar. Farquad? It doesn't like, matter. Is there Shrek? a D at the end? <laughs> no. There's no D, but it feels like there should be, you know? Okay, so it's not like Shrek. No. <laughs> no, but it's similar. I was just talking about Lord Farquaad because I saw Joker too, and sometimes he looked like him. <laughs> it, anyway. Anyway. And lastly, he dated a girl named Arabella Musgraves, who is another childhood friend of William's who he also had a summer fling with after his wow. gap year. This is when he's 19 following his gap year after high school. So he didn't immediately go off to university. Yeah. And this relationship his apparently was more passionate and physical than the relationships Ooh, in the past. Physical. How do people know that? I don't know. <laughs> he has been described as quite serious, cautious about the company that he keeps distrustful of others a little bit as i said measured Mm. mature but also very active he loves sports he's you know very into all of his activities and i would say he's a little indecisive too Mm. Mm. seems like his dad Mm -hmm. i was gonna say he seems like the opposite of his dad what yeah well I guess, does he like to read and is into, you know, history and stuff, or he's, um, or is he more of, like, an athlete? He actually was not the best student. Mm. Okay. Because <laughs> he seems like the popular jock type, mm-hmm. and his dad was, like, very shy and, like, reserved. And True. With the, with the old ladies, and mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> his friends with the old ladies. With his teddy. True, but, yeah, and... I mean, obviously they're not, like... They're not clones, obviously, but yeah. I feel like he seems more more serious, less fun mm. in a way. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I think I think they can both. I think anyone's capable of having fun. Yeah. But I think it's probably just like because he's royal, he's probably just more mm-hmm. picky about who he lets into his close circle. And that's probably why like all of his past relationships are like childhood friends, people he's known for like yeah. 10 plus years, you Ooh. know? And so that's why he's so measured and why he's probably, like, less, maybe standoffish a little bit. Mm-hmm. And even though he probably is Mr. Popular and outgoing, maybe he isn't as, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Carefree. But, he's not carefree. Yeah. But I feel like he's, being... Yeah, less carefree. I, th- I just think being the heir to the throne probably forces 
a responsibility on you that Mm -hmm. you can't escape. Yeah. But who is Kate? This Catherine Middleton. In the press, she was considered a normal middle class girl whose family has coal mining ancestry and it was a very big deal Mm -hmm. that this is the first time a royal has married a commoner in 350 years they kind of present kate as just the average girl next door but that's not exactly the case (laughs) yes when she was born her family was middle class and yes there is some coal mining ancestry there through her (laughs) mom And at this time when she was born, her parents did have normal jobs. Her mom, Carol, was a flight attendant and her dad was a flight dispatcher and they lived in a pretty modest two-bedroom house in Bradfield, South End. However, she does have aristocratic and noble ties. Her great-grandmother was a member of the Lupton family who are very wealthy, who are very wealthy and notable landowners. And they were described Mm. as landed gentry and were well acquainted with the British royal family and well-known philanthropists. Hmm. And actually, meanwhile, researchers in 2010 discovered that she's technically related to the royal family. Royal family. (laughs) Although distantly, her 11th great paternal grandfather, (laughs) Sir Thomas Layton, was a 16th century governor and diplomat who was also the 12th (laughs) great maternal grandfather to Prince William. Oh my gosh, that's so distant. That is very distant. I know. (laughs) When people found this out, they were like, the kissing cousins. But (laughs) not eat. Why do we always talk about this? (laughs) Take a drink. (laughs) Covering some kissing cousins this week. Like everybody. I mean, everybody's related technically. Yeah, I mean, I saw something recently where if you go back far enough, like if everybody were to have completely Mm. unique ancestors, that would mean way more people that have ever lived ever on this planet, ever in the history of this world. Mm -hmm. So that would mean that like everybody has some form of incest in our ancestors. Oh, totally. It's just yeah. Not possible to not Yeah. I heard I heard that in human history eighty percent of marriages are between cousins. (gasps) Okay, that's that's a lot. I feel like that kind well, of probably you know, ended. People have been around. For, really people have recently. been around for a long time. I know, but yeah, t- <laughs> technically, that this makes them twelfth cousins once removed. So it's pretty distant. Mm-hmm. That's so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Additionally, when she was five years old, her mother founded the company called Party Pieces, which is a mail order party supply retailer. So it's basically like Party City, but. Uh, catalog version of that and this business really took off and at its peak it was estimated to be valued at around 37 million dollars so kate's family's got a little money they are (laughs) not really your average middle class family they are rich and after that business took off her family moved into a one million dollar home in chapel row (laughs) And they oh also God. purchased a London flat in Chelsea for occasional use whenever they want it. So it's not like <laughs> she's really the girl next door. Wait, so was this no. $1 million place before or after the two-bedroom house? That that was after. This, so when oh, Kate okay. was around five, like her family moved into a really oh. big house. Um, it is impressive. I mean, it's pretty self-made yeah. mm-hmm. millionaire. Mm-hmm. But yeah, she's not like just a lowly commoner no you know no she's pretty (laughs) privileged and kate and her younger siblings pippa and michael also attended very prestigious private schools and she was big into athletics and school plays when she was 10 years old she actually first encountered william in person because his school would come to compete against her school in rugby matches and that was a big deal at her school like the prince is coming to play against our school so all the kids at the school would like get excited and watch on the (laughs) sidelines to see him and she got a glimpse of him wow um when she was 13 she was lead in a drama called murder in the red and in the play her character meets with a fortune teller who tells her soon you will meet a handsome man a rich gentleman and she responds Mm -hmm. it's all i ever hoped for will he fall in love with me and then the fortune teller says indeed he will and then she asks will he marry me to which the fortune teller says yes (gasps) 
And then lo and behold, the rich man in this play was named William. What? Is that wow. crazy? So was it? God is real. Was that like all scripted, but then it all just like came to fruition? Yeah, it was some weird foreshadowing in That's real life. So cool. <laughs> that is kind of creepy. And there's actually like a very grainy video of it on YouTube if you want to see it. Whoa. And then at 14, Kate began her first year of high school at Down High School, which is an all-girls boarding school. But she really struggled to fit in because the school was very clicky. The other girls apparently teased her for being too into studies and not otherworldly enough and Mm. she was also just painfully shy and really not that confident the next Mm -hmm. year she attended marble marble college a co-ed boarding school and she was very shy and homesick there but she had a much easier time apparently people really liked her they thought of her as really easygoing and former classmates remember her as not partaking in drinking or partying but her being very into sports playing tennis swimming and hockey And at this time, she wasn't really into guys, apparently. There were rumors that she allegedly had a poster of William in her dorm room (laughs) and that she would say to her (laughs) friends, I bet he's really kind. You can just tell looking at him. (laughs) But Kate denies this. You know, fast forward, when they got engaged, she was actually asked about this in their engagement interview. And she said, and it was kind of cute, William jokes, she had 10 posters of me on the wall. And then <laughs> then Kate laughed and says, he wishes, no, I had the Levi's model on my wall. And then she turns to William and she goes, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's really cute. Aww. That was actually really uh, yeah, cute. Yeah, I bet someone just made that up. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. It's a nice story, but maybe mm-hmm. too good of a story. Yeah. Wow, she sounds so, like, sweet and just simple. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I can picture some of my friends from high school being like her in a way. Yeah. I really like her researching her. She seems, seems, like, very down-to-earth, actually. That said, there are reports that she did very unseriously date a classmate named Henry Preston in high school. And they were actually dubbed one of the best couples in the yearbook. So... Wow. She must have had a boyfriend. Henry Preston. Mm-hmm. I know. That's such a, like, preppy name. <laughs> it is. Um, so posh. Her second year uh, at school, the boys on campus actually rated her as 2 out of 10 for her looks. So mean. She's a... What? Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. But then she had a glow up over the summer and... With the help of her mom. She, like, went to her mom and she's like, I want to look better or something. And I don't know what they did, but she returned to school and she was reportedly put on the fit list, which was a list of the prettiest girls on campus. Oh, my God. None of wow. those guys deserve her after mm-hmm. rating her only a 2 out of 10. That's insane. First of all, don't rate people, but also that's <laughs> just crazy. I don't think anybody is a 2 out of 10 and no i don't think anybody's below like a seven you know (laughs) especially no girls are just nobody no no one no girl is below a seven i think oh oh yeah no i saw i saw something recently that was like i've never seen an ugly woman and i think that's true i think all women are beautiful in many different ways I feel like there's no way she was a two. No. I mean, I know that pe- we all have our awkward years and such, but mm-hmm. she's so beautiful. And I just don't get how she could have ever been a two. It's so mean. I know. I, know. I think I think people are just cruel at that age. Yeah. I know. After graduating high school, she took a gap year. She traveled to Italy and Chile with friends, and then she began, she began college. I know they say college is like high school there but she began university at st andrews in scotland to (laughs) study art history oh man i would have loved to go to uni in scotland yeah (laughs) so cool Mm -hmm. and she has been described as shy feminine calm unassuming demure uh sporty (laughs) and very self-assured do you know what sports she played no, I said sporty. Oh, sporty. <laughs> 40. <laughs> She's a 40 year old. She's 40 now, though. <laughs> she played the same as William. She played, like, tennis and swimming. She played swimming. She was Benjamin Buttoning this entire time. <laughs> You're still laughing with the 40. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <sighs> so it is time for uni it's 2001 (laughs) and william breaks from 150 years of family tradition 
by attending <gasps> St. Andrews University in Scotland rather than going to Oxford or Cambridge because he wanted to study wow. art and apparently they had a good program there. And he lived in St. Salvador's Hall and his new friend group on campus was nicknamed the Sally Boys. And among <laughs> the boys on Salvatore Hall, they would see this beautiful brunette Kate Middleton. And she apparently was dubbed the prettiest girl at Sally's after their freshman orientation week. So, like, all the guys on campus wow. or in this hall, like, knew of Kate Middleton. Wow. And That's so cute. One they day, that they like, couldn't have competed with the prince of England, you know? Like, I know. If he had his sights on her, how mm-hmm. could they compete? I know. One day, William had the courage to ask her to eat breakfast with him at the dining hall with him and his friends. And when they were eating breakfast <gasps> together, they discovered that they had a lot in common. They both were one in the same major. They both enjoyed playing sports, including swimming and skiing. They both had coincidentally taken a gap year the year before and spent some of that time in Chile and in Florence. So they both did? Mm-hmm. Wow, weird. And that freshman year, William and Kate became pretty close. They apparently would study together. And because William was on the water polo team, they would wake up early and go swimming together. However, no. they were just friends at this point. They actually both were dating other people. Uh, Classic. What? Yep. Classic. I know. So that first semester, William began dating a creative creative writing major named Carly Massey Birch. And she has been described as a country bumpkin who was very <laughs> down to earth, tall and beautiful. So I know. <laughs> and okay, I feel bad saying this. I feel bad, but she was known as having the best derriere on campus. Best what? Derriere. Like, b- ass. Oh, she had a big <laughs> butt. This is all from this book. Or at book. least the, the best butt. The best butt on campus. <laughs> wow. And apparently, Kate was also going out with an older senior guy named Rupert Finch. But I don't really know a lot about Ooh. him. I don't. I tried to look into it. I'm so intrigued by this writer with a big butt who's a country bumpkin. <laughs> Who dated the Prince of England for a brief period of time. Who's she? I know. What's her story? I don't know. Maybe we can cover them in like a side episode. <laughs> Despite having a solid group of friends and a girlfriend, William really wasn't happy that freshman year. And he found his course load Mm. very challenging and would often go home. And when he would go home, he would go clubbing with his friends back in London and spend time with his old summer fling, Arabella. You know, the one he had that passionate relationship with, physical relationship. And that ultimately led Carly, you know, the country bumpkin, to break up with him. (laughs) Oh, poor Carly. I was going to say, freshman year is really hard. It is. Mm-hmm. Even even if you are technically having fun, it just you feel really unstable. I don't know. I just I can understand missing your old mates. Yeah, back home. yeah. Especially first semester. Not happy. First semester yeah. is oh, yeah. so rough. Everyone was crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even if you grew up with like the best education or the best tutors, going into probably you know like college or whatever. It could be a challenge for you. Mhm. It's so cool. I feel like we I feel like we've never covered a couple like in college yeah. before. Besides Albert well, Einstein. Not, not like this in Oh yeah, true true. Usually not this in depth. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, Einstein. So, if Einstein. you're still in high school and you're about to go into college, just know that it can be a little challenging, <laughs> but <laughs> even for Prince William. Yes. Yeah. But not too challenging. I don't know. I'm trying to be a little No, it gets this. better. I feel like with college, it takes a while to really find your footing and your friend group. It just mm-hmm. kind of settles in without you realizing it. Yeah. But in you the beginning, you're like, it. you're leaving your door open. You know, you're like really forcing these friendships mm-hmm. and it's kind of awkward. I don't think anyone really opens their door anymore. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure William didn't. But, you know, also for him, he has to have, like, security with him the whole time. Yeah, that probably doesn't help. Mm -hmm. Wow. So after one semester, he really wanted to transfer, but the palace was worried that that would be a PR nightmare and that it would alienate their relationship with the Scots. 
so that sucks like you have also have this whole like it's like political reasons you can't transfer (laughs) yeah literally (laughs) can't piss off a whole country apparently prince philip was like his grandfather was like yeah he needs to suck it up he just has to stay there Mm. and they settled on a compromise that he could change his major to geography instead oh cool so then i i do think that oh sorry just for our maybe young listeners out there, I do think sometimes it is good to just suck it up and stick it out. Because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people after one semester were like, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. But no, like you said, it can get better. No, for yeah. real. Definitely stick it out. It will get better. 100%. Mm-hmm. I love all the advice we're giving to people. Okay, so second semester, there, Kate is volunteering to catwalk in a on-campus charity fashion Ooh, show. I've heard of this. Mm-hmm. And William paid 200, 200 to sit in the front row. And as Kate walked down the runway in black underwear and a see-through dress, William apparently yeah. turned to his friend Fergus and said, Kate's hot. How wow. eloquent. <laughs> mm-hmm. He was googly-eyed for her. And after the fashion show at an after party, Kate and William were deep in conversation in the corner and they clinked their glasses together to toast. And then <laughs> apparently, I don't know how we know this, but apparently William leaned in and kissed her. But Kate pulled away wow. because keep in mind, she still has a boyfriend at this point. Oh, and, still? Mm-hmm classic but apparently she did return the feelings i mean you know you know when you kind of like someone but you don't know if they like you and then it's confirmed that they like you and then you really like them you know Mm -hmm. i think that's what happened here oh (laughs) (laughs) come on yes you do anyways so now it's sophomore year and kate and william are actually roommates in a shared flat with three other friends fergus olivia and natasha so wow. the five of them they were are roommates. all yeah they're all living <laughs> yeah, they were roommates they're living together splitting chores buying groceries throwing dinner parties and i don't think the roommates knew right away that there was something going on between kate and william in the eyes of the press and the public william at this point is single but paparazzi is always trying to catch him with different girls and link him up with someone but in their own apartment behind closed doors william and kate are free to just be romantic with each other which because i would say like if you're a sophomore in college don't room with someone that you're newly dating or that you have a crush on i think that's bad news but i can see where william wants privacy that is kind of a smart idea that like you can at least have some privacy within your own apartment it's a way to be discreet so it's not like Mm -hmm. you have your own apartment but then the paparazzi can see kate like coming and going yeah exactly in this way living together if kate's coming and going they can just be like oh well kate lives there yeah exactly Wow. And in public, they would arrive at events separately, and um, they had an agreement to never hold hands in public. Hmm. So was anything happening at this point in time? Yeah, they're hooking up. I don't know what happened to Kate's old boyfriend, but her and William are together. And actually, their friends first found out at a little party at their flat when William's ex-girlfriend, Carly, the country bumpkin, was there. (laughs) And they're all playing Never Have I Ever, and... Mm. Carly said, never have I ever dated two people in this room. And then William rolls his eyes and takes a drink. And that's the first time that he acknowledged Hmm. to all of his friends that he was dating Kate. This is such a good teen drama or something. I know. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) So then after the school year, Kate had a 1920s themed 21st birthday party. Me and Kelly had one once. Fun. And they Mm -hmm. apparently were very cozy with each other. And at the end of the school year, the press is beginning to hear rumors about Kate. People are starting to pick up who is this Kate Middleton person. Reporters actually showed up at her parents' house and confronted her father on his doorstep. And he said, we are very amused at the thought of being in-laws with the royal family, but I don't think it is going to happen. Mm, but he might not even know that like Kate and William are dating at this point because yeah. I don't know at that age you don't tell your parents everything. No, especially if it's something 
casual maybe it's kind of under the radar this relationship i think then a few weeks later william had his 21st birthday and allegedly he was actually more preoccupied with the presence of his ex-girlfriend jekka there you know jekka's the one from kenya that he met yep Mm -hmm. flash from the past Mm mm-hmm and if you were there at this party, you would have actually thought that he was dating Jekka instead of Kate. While he people were singing happy birthday to him, Jekka was standing next to him. <gasps> wow. <laughs> this is such an early 20s college type of experience, I think. I know, seriously, it feels so ordinary. It does. Why was Jekka even I don't know. there? I, I don't, he, she's like gonna be there a lot. Like he really keeps in Ooh, touch with her. Wow. Wow. So then, junior year, William and Kate are back at school and still together and are desperate for more privacy, and the couple move to a very storybook-looking private cottage a quarter of a mile away from campus, and um, like his security officers... Yeah, like, yeah, it's like a little house. Wow. <laughs> Which... It's pretty serious. I know, it's like they're too <laughs> young for this. House. In... This book, the author writes, William joked that it was like a miniature high grove, and with its crab apple trees, blooming rhododendrons, and patches <laughs> of wild poppies, it was an impressive substitute. When it was warm enough, they would pack a picnic hamper and spend a pleasant afternoon stretched out on a blanket, sharing a bottle of chilled white wine, an occasional pheasant their only company. They were blissful days, made all the more romantic by the fact virtually no one knew about their romance. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so sweet. It sounds like so beautiful i know (laughs) the public would soon learn about their romance for real it was leaked on april 1st 2004 kate had accompanied the royal family on a trip to Klosters, a resort village in the swiss alps where they had vacationed for skiing every year and paparazzi took photos of them on the slopes together and the sun published the photos with the headline finally dot 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 william gets a girl Finally. Finally. He's had girls. Yeah. I, <laughs> I guess they This is know. like his fifth girlfriend at this point. <laughs> Compared to Diana or Meghan Markle, I would say that Kate had a more smooth transition into the royal family. She was mm. really polite with photographers and she never spoke out. And I, I just think she had an easier time like keeping her peace mm. and not really letting things bother her too much. I th- think she like got it what she was supposed to do and she really enjoyed spending time with william's family too she's very like professional Mm -hmm. i guess you'd say keeps her cards close Mm -hmm. she's good at that now it's senior year and even though kate and william seem to be having a lot of fun together william began telling his friends that he's feeling claustrophobic in the relationship and wants space oh no Mm. Allegedly, he claimed that he wanted to focus on his studies his senior year before graduating. To Kate, like, he claimed he wants to focus on his studies more. But honestly, it kind of seems like he just didn't want to be tied down to one girl. Apparently, he had taken up a close friendship with an American (laughs) heiress named Anna Sloan, who he had met through a mutual friend. And Anna had recently lost her father in a tragic shooting and William and her oh. bonded over their shared grief over losing a parent, and he was pursuing her. So... I think this is such a common thing mm-hmm. when you're in your early 20s, too. Like, that, it sucks to hear that, and we feel for Kate, but, I mean, they are young. It, it, it must be kind of intense to be already living in a house together. Yeah. And basically acting like you're married and you're still in college. Mm-hmm. I know some people are ready for that when they're in college, mm-hmm. but... It sounds a bit intense to me. And probably yeah. being the heir to the throne, there's probably some pressure as well. Oh, totally. And especially mm-hmm. with his parents' marriage, he definitely probably wanted to play the field to be like, okay, like I want to make sure I'm definitely picking mm-hmm. the right partner for me. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, it, it, I was kind of glad to hear he had a couple of girlfriends because, yeah, he, he you want him to explore a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, <laughs> take his time, not just jump right into it. But still, it's sad for Kate. I know. Mm-hmm. Probably. But apparently this Anna girl actually only saw William as just a friend. <laughs> oh, that's good, good at least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And apparently he also was thinking a lot about life after college. And he actually had his sights on reconnecting 
apparently, allegedly, how do we know for sure? But he allegedly wanted to reconnect with Jekka in Kenya. <gasps> Is Jekka like the one that got away? It kind of seems like it. Him and Kate go on a break, and actually during that trial separ- <gasps> separation, he also developed feelings for another person, an heiress named <laughs> Isabella, who was the daughter of a wealthy banker. And according to oh Nicole, the author, she had cover girl looks compared to Kate's girl next door beauty, which is kind of mean. I think Kate is different kinds of beauty, I guess. Yeah. But apparently Isabella also rejected William. <laughs> mm-hmm. Seems like... That's actually so that's, like his dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is. He keeps trying to open doors mm. that's away from Kate. And they keep getting <laughs> shut right into his face. I like the way you put it. <laughs> I know. I mean, even um, Jekka's away in Kenya, like... I know. So in the fall, mm. they return to school. And Kate and William are back together. You know, it... That's so normal, too. Like, you go away for the summer, you break up, but then you're back on campus. <laughs> Let's just be together, you know? And they agreed that he wouldn't try to contact Isabella anymore, the other girl he was pursuing. Which, like, duh, you shouldn't be doing that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but Charles was a big fan of Kate, and he would invite her to join the family on the annual ski trip. And he actually invited her to go skiing with them just before his wedding to Camilla. Nice. Wow, so Charles himself is reaching out? Yes. <laughs> Apparently. Inviting her? Well, maybe he's saying to William, like, invite Kate, you know? Oh. But Kate wasn't able to go to the wedding because of royal protocol. Oh, what's the protocol? I don't know. Basically... The firm is just like, no, she's not serious enough. Mm. Maybe they have to be engaged Mm. or something to go to the wedding. So then after college, there was some uncertainty about, you know, whether this is just a college relationship or if it's for the long haul. And I think they both were not sure about it. William traveled to New Zealand to do some royal engagements and then returned to Kenya. And he actually met up with Jekka. But (gasps) this time around, he brought Kate with him. So Okay, that's good um, at least. That's a good sign. Mm-hmm. Then in January 2006, William began his military <laughs> training, and he and Kate would have to be apart for a month. And beforehand, per Harry's suggestion, the couple went off on a romantic ski holiday to the Swiss Alps, where they were photographed kissing by paparazzi. Ooh. And at this time, the palace is already drawing up plans about a potential engagement, even though William has <laughs> no plans to propose anytime soon. And apparently this obviously seems very premature, but it's not unusual in the royal family. And they start planning things super far in advance, weddings, even funerals, they'll plan very far in advance, sometimes decades Mm. before a person has even passed away. Wow. May 2006, Kate attended the wedding of William's stepsister, Laura Parker Bowles. And her presence there solidified to the public that she was a part of this family. And around Mm. this time, Woolworths began making William and Kate branded wedding china to prepare an announcement. Oh Um, my gosh. (laughs) That's so premature. Uh, It's really far in advance. What do they do Um, with all that china if that doesn't happen? This made William very anxious, especially remembering how much pressure his mom felt before getting married. Apparently, Diana had cold feet right before marrying Charles, and her sister said, Bad luck, Dutch. Your name is on the tea towels, so you're too late to chicken out now. And, Mm. you know, William... Why'd she say that? I know, seriously. (laughs) William is not the advice you want to hear. Literally, yeah. (laughs) It's never too late. He's anxious you know he's not even sure if kate is the one and the public is really projecting this onto them yeah he feels like his fate is probably already written deep so (laughs) i mean maybe i mean he probably does really really like kate but it probably doesn't help your feelings to feel like you have no choice in the matter yeah and yeah it's stressful getting even like normal people mm -hmm. it's stressful to get a lot of pressure from your relatives or whatever Mm -hmm. so I I empathize. Yeah. And William was very cautious, too. Like, he doesn't want to rush into marriage unless this was a decision that they were both absolutely sure about. Like, he wants to make sure that Kate is sure about it, too. Yeah. Because it's a big deal to marry a prince. So he wants to make sure that Kate knows what she's getting herself into. How old are they at this Mm. point in time? Young. They're like 24, 23. Wow. So 
Then William is in the military academy and Kate lives in a London flat that her parents bought for her and she's applying to work at <laughs> art galleries. <laughs> I kind of feel like just she like us. Yeah, I kind of feel like she probably identifies with like Charlotte York. Oh yeah. So then it's December 2006 and Kate sat front row at William's graduation ceremony from the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst and Kate's parents actually sat next to her too, along with William's grandmother, the Queen, Charles and Camilla were also present and this was really Kate's first official event as William's girlfriend besides the wedding of his stepsister. And according to lip readers, who knows if this is true, (laughs) but Kate whispered to her mother during the ceremony, I love the uniform. It's so sexy. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And there's speculation about, as mentioned, an eventual engagement, which is only intensified by the press and curiosity about Kate is just beginning to grow more and more. And William is very determined to make sure that Kate didn't really experience the same suffering that his mom did. So he set her up with a team of people, including royal protection officers and aides who helped to coach her on how to handle photographers. Nice. So she's kind of like training for many years for this. Meanwhile, her career is kind of uncertain. She sets up a clothing business under her parents' company, but she's traveling to Milan to buy all these materials for it, and she quickly runs into debt. It's not really going too well. And then she accepts a part-time job as an accessory buyer for a clothing store called Jigsaw, but she only does that for a year, and then she just does like project management for her parents' company. So it's kind of all over the place. Mm. January of 2007 it's kate's 25th birthday and the press is speculating that again maybe this is when they'll get engaged on her birthday so she (laughs) wakes up on her birthday to hundreds of photographers waiting outside her house to snap a photo of her but of course she's not engaged she's only 25 (laughs) and this is the first time that she really started to feel utterly overwhelmed and isolated in this experience and William actually issued a very rare statement to the press asking for privacy because he feels bad that Kate's birthday has been ruined by this but at this time a single image of Kate could sell upwards of 20,000 euros so it's very hard to get privacy and all the while things are getting kind of rocky between them William and Kate are spending less and less time together with him away doing military training for weeks at a time and in the spring they do go on a ski trip to get together however there are multiple reports that when William goes to London he actually goes clubbing without Kate and is often photographed cozying up to other girls one time he... <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Jekka no know, no not Jekka <laughs> just, just like kind of random girls one time it's this blonde girl oh, no. who he's seen flirting and dancing with Another time, he's photographed with his arm around this 18-year-old Brazilian student. And honestly, I think it's innocent, but his hand is kind of close to her breast. But I think it's just, like, where his hand (gasps) falls. But, of course, in the press, it's like, William grabbing this girl's boob. And then another time, he's photographed dancing with another woman. So, And then another time, it's with that big butt writer... (laughs) <laughs> the hillbilly no, or whatever country <laughs> but, but you know all these instances are very embarrassing for Kate and she gives him an ultimatum yeah. that he has to either fully commit to her or it's over and to that Ooh. William told her that they should take a break <gasps> <gasps> that is not the response you want to hear. I'm shocked. I know. I know. I'm not shocked because I feel like that's what I expected because that's what I mm-hmm. felt like he was feeling. But at the same time, I know what happens in the future. So at the same time, I thought that that wouldn't happen, you know? I know. Wow. Well, how does he turn it around? I know. Oh my gosh. So after this, Prince William started enjoying his freedom and partying with <gasps> friends, living his bachelor life. Meanwhile, the Duke of Edinburgh, Philip, William's grandfather, allegedly actually even reached out to Kate and told her that William would offer her a ring in the future when the time is oh right. God. I thought you were going to say the Duke of Edinburgh like <laughs> slid into Kate's DMs and was going to hit her up. <laughs> That'd be crazy, though. What would you do if your boyfriend broke up with you but then his grandfather asked you out instead? <laughs> I feel like then it would be over. Like, there'd be no way to come. 
if you accept <laughs> that is it, yeah. So, that's so meddlesome, though. Why is he messaging or writing to Kate about that? <laughs> I know. It's not they even adamant. dad. It's his grandfather. It's like, please stay out of this. <laughs> Maybe they thought there was just, like, so much money to lose with this. I know. I think they really liked Kate. They're like, oh, okay. Mm. She's, like you said, keeps her cards close to her chest. Like, she's not going to cause any issues for us. Yeah. To distract from the heartbreak, Kate put all of her energy into training for a charity rowing event with her girlfriends. However, apparently by the time the race came up, she and William were back together. And she pulled out of the race. (laughs) Oh, my. If I was her girlfriend. She didn't do it. Mm Mm-hmm. If I was her girlfriend and I got dragged into a rowing event because her and her (laughs) ex broke up and then she pulled out of the race at the last minute, I'd be pissed. Because they got back together. But apparently, what you can still do it. I know. (laughs) Apparently, the reason she dropped out is because of the media attention and that she was worried that the practices were a magnet for paparazzi. But, like, honestly, it's for charity. Don't you want the spotlight on it, you know? True. To like, And it makes you look really athletic I, and cool. I exactly. bet if they didn't get back together, she still would have done it. Because then William would see the photos in the magazines and be like, whoa, Kate is, you know, mm. in a rowing mm-hmm. charity event. <laughs> Wow. So years later in their engagement interview, they're actually asked about this time when they broke up and I want to show a clip. First day you've been going out a bit and you split up, famously, all over the papers. What was all that about? I mean, people are bound to want to know. Well, I think, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I wouldn't read over, I wouldn't believe everything you read in the paper, but, uh, you know, in that particular instance, um, we, did, we did split up for a bit, but that was just, you know, we were both very young, it was at university and we were, we were sort of both finding ourselves as such and being, you know, different characters and stuff. It was very much trying to find our own way and, uh, and we were growing up and so it was just sort of you know, a bit of space and a bit of things like that and it soon worked out for the better. And I think I, I at the time wasn't very happy about it but actually it made me a stronger person. You find out things about yourself that maybe you hadn't realised or I think you can get quite consumed by a relationship when you're younger and you know, I, I, really, I really valued that time for me as well, although I didn't think it at the time. Looking back on it, I... Has a chance to recenter yourself. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It's it's not all bad. (laughs) Wow. They looked so young in that. How long ago was that video? I think that's like 2010, so 14 years ago. He still had hair. It was kind of crazy to see. (laughs) I know. Appreciate her honesty. I know. I was really impressed that she said that. But she still was very professional Mm -hmm. and had like a positive spin Mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. I we've talked about it. Like, how many times is too many times to break up for a couple? Mm -hmm. But I know when you are young, sometimes you do have to have those breakups to reaffirm that you do want to be together. Mm. It's tough, and especially if you are so young. And you had spent so much time together. Sometimes you do need those breakups to spend time by yourself to figure out mm-hmm. who you are and then come True. back together. And yeah. she kind of mentioned that, like, figure out who you are as a person. She needed that time. I mean, maybe yeah, she didn't exactly. need that. Like she said, she didn't really think that at the time. But yeah. looking back, maybe she did. Well, your early 20s, too, that is such a young age to mm-hmm. potentially never be single ever again if you do get married mm-hmm. to this person. So, yeah, it is good to have that time to just, you know, be single for the last couple times or months of your life and make sure that that's mm-hmm. what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So now it's 2008 and it's March and the couple go on their annual ski trip, though Charles didn't attend in order to his Reduce his carbon footprint, which I only included because that came up in our (laughs) Charles and Camilla episode that he is very big into the environment. Wow. Where did they used to go about him? (laughs) Where did they used to go skiing? Just in the Swiss Alps. So, Uh. and then on April 11th, Prince William finished his Air Force training and received his Air Force wings from his father, Prince Charles, at a ceremony, and Kate attended it. But apparently William drew criticism when he flew and landed his Royal Air Force helicopter into Kate's parents' garden, which prompted people to get upset over the misuse of military resources for the royal family's personal use. 
especially during a time of war. And it just like reignited this whole debate about royal members and whether they should even be in the military. Well, I I thought, did he ruin the garden as well? <laughs> I don't know if it's like well, the I, garden is... The garden must be massive for him to land a helicopter there. No, I think they mean, like, garden as in, like, lawn. That's what they say over there. Okay. okay. Yeah. I imagined him landing, like, on the flowers and the propellers, like, (laughs) making all the dirt (laughs) cascade everywhere. No, but my question is, is he just doing all this training for, like, nothing? Like, what is this for, you know? Yeah, that's a good question. It's tradition. It's tradition, tradition, but... but yeah, so he does more military service in years than the traditional, than the a royal member traditionally would. And actually, mm-hmm. he started being labeled as a reluctant royal or reluctant figurehead because of that. I think some of it is just like duty to country. Like he did really want to actually like fight combat. Obviously, in his position, that was like never going to happen. But I don't think like other than being a member of the royal family, he kind of has his own career. And as a prince and then eventual king, that's been chosen for him. So I do think like being in the military is kind of like a source of independence and autonomy for him in a sense, because Mm -hmm. he can like kind of build his career here, even though it's still pretty limited what he can and can't do. Do you know like what he does in the military? So it's mostly training that he does, but then later on he becomes a search and rescue pilot. Oh, interesting. I'm curious. I'm curious why I I can agree with the fact that he probably shouldn't be using military helicopters to visit his girlfriend, mm-hmm. but I'm curious why people would think would come to the conclusion that the royal shouldn't be in the military. I don't. I don't get that. I know, because you would think you would want them. Like you're like, okay, if I'm paying their tax dollars, like, they do something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think it kind of bothers people that like. They are in the military, but they don't really do the same level of service as other people. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like for show in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it could be like good for morale in a way. Yeah. Like, oh, the prince is here. Like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> and I think it brings attention to what's happening with soldiers and everything. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Also, they might not feel like, oh, nobody cares about us. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like our country doesn't even care that we're out here. Like, if someone from the royal family is involved, I think it could feel good. Yeah, I, I'd i be curious to look yeah. more into it and hear what some British people have to say about it. We don't really have that yeah, in our country. No. We don't. No, because, so, like, the people who are, like, like the president or something, maybe they had served previously, but they're mm-hmm. not, like, actively serving. Yeah. We don't have anyone, like, born into these roles. No. Yeah. But, okay, so then in May, there is a royal f- wedding, but it's <gasps> William's oldest cousin, Peter, who's getting married, oh. and William is actually not able to attend the wedding because he has already accepted the invitation to attend his ex, Jekka, her brother's <laughs> wedding in Kenya. Oh, my gosh. So he doesn't go to his cousin's wedding. Wow. Instead, Kate goes in his place. She stands in for him at the wedding. And he goes by himself to Jekka's brother's wedding? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would wow. not like that. No. That's crazy. I Wait, guess who's... Jekka is just a good friend, but... I don't know. Who's his cousin related to? Like, which side? Like, Diana's or his dad? His dad's side. So she's standing in for him at the wedding, which showed how comfortable she felt in this family and how highly regarded she was by the queen. But there are also reports at this time that the queen is concerned with Kate not really having a career. And apparently she asked her (laughs) advisors, what is it exactly that Kate does? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Which is kind of a fair question. The queen? <laughs> I'm surprised she cares yeah, so much. The queen mm-hmm. called Kate jobless and said, yes. <laughs> yeah. get a job. She's like, <laughs> yeah, literally. Because to the public, it appears like Kate is just going on these long holidays. She's always photographed either skiing or in the Caribbean with her family or on vacations with William. And at this time, Britain is in a recession. So the queen is concerned that such frivolous mm-hmm. displays of wealth are really off-putting. Mm-hmm. Kate's like the doesn't... first influencer. Yeah, literally. <laughs> she doesn't really work. But in her defense, <laughs> it would be hard to have a full-time job with the constant media attention. Mm. And she, I'm guessing she would have to give it up 
eventually anyway. Yeah. Right? So Slew. why should she work so hard to like climb up a corporate ladder or something and then Exactly. You know? Yeah, that's so true. That would be such a waste. And she also does have a lot of money, so but she really took this personally. <laughs> She did not like that they were saying this about her. So Kate's inner circle, this is like one of the few times that Kate has like kind of responded to something. Her inner circle responded to the tabloids and claimed that she was working full time for her parents' company. Although I'm not really sure if that's true. And within days, her parents' company posted a black and white image to their website like about their team. But then it was removed and the queen suggested that Kate should just affiliate herself with charities like okay oh don't don't try to like pretend you're working for your com- parents company like just do some charity work that's kind of embarrassing <laughs> not gonna lie i know oh, oh my god. god hey mom and dad can you like post a headshot of me on your website <laughs> to show that like yeah. I for you yeah then in june william is knighted by his grandmother queen elizabeth in a royal ceremony in which he receives the royal knight of the garter title and Kate is in attendance. And then afterwards, he begins his Royal Navy training, continuing this long distance with Kate. And then once again mm-hmm. in July, Kate stands in for William at a royal wedding, this time for his second cousin, Lady Rose Windsor, as William is away doing his training in the Caribbean. And then in September, William returns home and is expected to become a full time royal however he shocks the palace when as i mentioned he decides to stay in the air force and become a search and rescue pilot and in doing this he is seen as like i said a reluctant figurehead and it kind of seems like he's trying to postpone his royal duties you know he's not that close in line to the throne yeah what's the rush yeah i guess the only thing is the queen is getting older so she can't do as much traveling anymore so charles is already doing you know his share Mm. but it's kind of like time for william to start doing some of that while the queen Mm. can kind of take a break and his decision just as much shocks kate because she didn't necessarily expect to be a military girlfriend and this also means that they're gonna have to wait a little bit longer for them to even begin planning their future together and planning having a family or getting married Um, what was she thinking when she was at all these ceremonies I know, yeah. I guess she thought that he would just, like, do the training and then be like, okay, now I'm going to do, just be a prince. I guess but. so. <laughs> I know it's upsetting everybody, but I'm glad, I'm kind of glad that he decided to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm guessing no, he does it do does it, does it does upset me. I'm he does, I'm happy yeah. to think For a little he's bit. doing okay. something. I'd rather he do more than mm-hmm. less. Yeah, what's the point of doing training and then just yeah. nothing? Mm-hmm. With the training, mm-hmm. you know? Like, I guess they can use him in case there's a war and they need people or something <laughs> yeah but we need like... all the extra bodies <laughs> we completely run out we really need prince william that's how dire the situation like, what's the is. point of doing all this all this training and then you don't use it i know, you know? seriously yeah exactly so then it's 2009 and kate middleton ugh, poor kate she has this crazy uncle gary goldsmith <laughs> who is, this is her mom, Carol's Aww. brother. And I guess he's this mega millionaire. He's an entrepreneur. Oh my God, what um, the but frick? He's kind of crazy though. And in July 2009, to Kate's horror, he invited undercover reporters to his villa. And while they're there, he's just like snorting cocaine with a hundred euro bill. And he just blabbed about <laughs> William and Kate. I don't think he really said anything too salacious or crazy. I don't actually think they had much to hide, but he does tell the reporters that Kate and William are planning to get married at the end of that year, which was not true. Yeah. So (laughs) I don't know what he's thinking, but Kate was super embarrassed. And also just the fact that she has this crazy uncle who's like doing coke in front of reporters and stuff. Must have been all that coke. Yeah. mm -hmm. Just any little stuff like that can like flare up in the press. But both William and Charles assured her that it will all blow over and it's no big deal and it did but still the middleton family abruptly took off to the caribbean to escape and go on vacation to (laughs) as a natural reaction when something like that happens you go on vacation impromptly (laughs) to the caribbean to hide the fact that the uncle does coke yeah (laughs) so are wedding bells coming up not yet (laughs) what year is it now 
It's uh, 2009. Wow. So Kate and William are still pretty far from getting engaged. He just signed up for 18 months of training in the Air Force. Though he, at this time, he's assuring her that they are serious and that it's not a question of if, but when. And during this time, they see each other on the weekends, but it's still tough and isolating for Kate because at this time, most of her friends have gotten married or engaged. And so, you know, she's not really like living the mm. the life that they lived in their early 20s like and still able to like go out and do her own thing she at this time is getting a little impatient or just curious like is this actually going to happen and the press starts calling her weighty katie damn then in the fall of that year 2009 it's come out that the queen does need harry and william to do more royal engagements because she is getting old and she cannot travel as much so William, unfortunately, does have to take a step back from the military, and he's just got to do what he's got to do. He sucks it up and does his prince stuff. In January mm. of the next hmm. year, he goes on a publicity tour to New, Ze- New Zealand and Australia, and while in Australia, an elderly woman asked him if he plans to marry Kate, and he responded with a laugh and said, as I keep saying, just wait and see. Oh. I know. I feel bad. They're getting a lot of pressure. This is like, us normal people get this, but this is magnified. It's been so many years. What's with all the coy answers and stuff, you know? It's like, (laughs) yeah. if the answers no at this point, just cut Kate loose, you mm -hmm. know? But remember when Kristen Stewart went on Howard Stern's podcast and he said, like, you gonna marry her about her girlfriend at the time? And who's now her mm-hmm. fiance? And she was like, "Yes, yes." If you're a public person and you're asked that, you're really put on the spot. There's mm, no good are, way to answer yeah. it because if you say yes, you're just kind of like maybe giving up the surprise too, or you know, causing all this noise even further. Mm. Yikes! Like he's probably like, <laughs> "Hold off on the China." Like, I really, we don't need that yet. <laughs> I wonder what so, happened to all that China from before. I don't know. They're still holding on to it. Yeah. Yeah. So at this time, Kate and William seem to be growing closer than ever, but there is just an intense amount of pressure. Also from their families as well, Kate's mother, Carol, apparently is getting increasingly concerned that her daughter is 28 without a ring on her finger. That's not that old. (laughs) Mom's worst nightmare, Mm -hmm. apparently. Apparently Kate's mom is like kind of not a social climber, but she is very caught up in Kate's relationship with William at this time. She really wants Kate to, like, secure the bag. She doesn't want her to be so close to potentially being a princess and then having it fall through. So then in October... Understandable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that'd be crazy. Then in October, Kate's mother would not need to wait for much longer because while on a trip to Kenya, William flew Kate up to the high slopes of Mount Kenya and standing on the shores of the mountain with a view of the glacial lakes at over 12,000 feet, he popped the question. Wow. And he proposed wow. with his mother's engagement ring, which was a 12 cut sapphire ring surrounded by 14 diamonds in an 18 karat white gold. And oh this is October. And then a couple weeks later, the couple officially announced their engagement on November 16th, 2010. And here is a little interview clip of them talking about it. William and Kate, people are obviously incredibly curious about you. So let's start with the obvious. William, where did you propose? When, how, and Kate, what did you say? Uh, it was about uh, three weeks ago on a holiday in Kenya. Um, we had a little private time um, away together with some friends, and I just decided that it was the right time, really. Um, we'd been talking about, about um, marriage for a while, so it wasn't a massively big surprise, but uh, I took her up somewhere nice in, uh, in Kenya and, uh, and proposed. It's very romantic. There's a true romantic in that. There is. <laughs> and you said yes, obviously. Of course, yes. Yeah. And, so, <laughs> and you knew you were going to do this from day one of the whole day, or you, you waited till the end? I'd been planning it for a while, but uh, as every guy out there will know, it's, uh, it takes a certain amount of motivation to get yourself going. So I was planning it, and then it just felt really right out in, in Africa. It was beautiful at the time, and I, just, I had done a little bit of planning to obviously share my romantic side. And Kate, you'd been on holiday a while, so did you see this coming? Was he getting a bit no, nervous and jumpy? No, not at all, no, because, you know, we were out there with friends and things, so I really didn't expect it at all. I thought he might have sort of maybe thought about it, but no. It was a total shock when it came and very excited. <laughs> and he produced a ring? Yeah. There and then? 
I did. Yeah, I'd been carrying it around with me in my rucksack for about three weeks before that. And uh, I literally would not let it go. Everywhere I went, I was keeping hold of it because I knew this thing, if it disappeared, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Um, and yeah, because I planned it, it sort of, it went fine as, you know, you hear a lot of horror stories about proposing and things go horribly wrong. It went really, really well. And uh, yeah, I was really pleased that she said yes. And it's a family ring. It is a family ring, yes. It's my mother's engagement ring. So I thought it was quite nice because um, obviously she's not going to be around to share any of the, um, the fun and excitement of it all. This, this was my way of keeping her sort of close to it all. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But I'm confused because I thought Kenya was like him and Janka's place or whatever. <laughs> Janka? What's her Janka. name? Janka. Jekka. Jekka. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had the same thought. Why did he have to do it in his and Jekka's place? I know. He's like fixed. I, I know he loves Kenya. And maybe that's why he loved Jekka, just because like he associates her with Kenya. But maybe. Makes you worry, you know? Is it? Yeah. Is he still caught up on her? Ooh, now I'm intrigued. Well, mm -hmm. I would be a little annoyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They said in the clip that they were out with friends, and I want to wonder if Jekka was one of the friends that they were out with. Maybe. Could make sense because <laughs> they were in Kenya, unless they brought a whole crew with them to Kenya. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was funny. He said something about like working up the courage, and she turned and like looked at the journalist. She, I don't know. I just feel like she had a reaction to that. Like, mm -hmm. oh, really? It to work up the courage? <laughs> like it was? It's been years. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe reading too far yeah. into it. And but. he was like, oh, it wasn't too big of a surprise because we've been talking about it. But it seems like a little bit of a surprise, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's official. It's official. Yeah. I remember this. I because honestly. They weren't really on my radar until they got engaged. I actually don't remember them until, like, their wedding was upon us. And, like, I just was, You were pretty young. You, I mean, yeah. You were, like, 10 years I old. I was really young, <laughs> but I remember, like, <laughs> I remember when it was, like, oh, the royal wedding's, like, coming up. And then I watched it, like, live on TV, and then they had, like, DVDs of it. But I don't really remember the whole proposal of it all. Me neither. I remember it was But a, of course, we're Americans. Yeah, so. yeah, but it was still a big deal. Like, we always got People Magazine in my house, and then people started doing this thing where any story about the royals, like, there would be, like, a special title, like, the royals. And <laughs> the royal coverage just, at the time, seemed to just pick up more and more, and I feel like it never really stopped. Their engagement, like, really mm. sparked, it seems, huge interest in them that I just maybe wasn't mm. aware of as a kid. I mean, I'm sure there was a huge interest in them, like, with Diana and everything, but I feel like it just kind of made people excited internationally. Yeah. I think it made people excited all over again, because before it was like, yeah, it was the excitement of, oh, Diana and Charles got married, and then they have their babies, and they have their kids, and it was exciting when, like, Dan Diana was alive, but then after she died, the only excitement was, like, yeah, William and Harry are growing up, but, like, that's not yeah. that exciting, but having, yeah. like, a wedding on the horizon, ooh, you know, that's something. <laughs> yeah, and these big royal weddings, it's almost like a huge holiday, mm -hmm. and it's a huge moneymaker for them, too. Like, they sell so many different memorabilia associated with it, people mm -hmm. travel, mm -hmm. So it's, much and it's them. huge publicity, yeah. In the interview, Kate also revealed that William had asked her father for permission for her hand in marriage. Ooh. And that is where we so will old stop fashioned. for now. <gasps> oh my gosh, you're leaving us on a cliffhanger. Mm hmm Do they get no. married? <laughs> Does Jekka reappear? I know. Does she? Or Carly, the country bumpkin. <laughs> With the big ass. What about Finch, oh, wow. the older senior that Kate was dating her freshman year? Oh, yeah. And what about Pippa? What's up with her? I know. She really became a celebrity she, around this time. It's funny. She actually became known for her ass as well. Not to objectify, but I remember, <laughs> like, because she at the wedding, this is really for the next episode, but she was, you know, the maid of honor was helping Kate with her train and all the photos were are just of like her backside. <laughs> can't wait. And people were like, <laughs> yeah, whoa. Can't wait. Pippa stole the show. But Pippa's yeah. such a cute name. I know. Thanks, Mel. Oh my I gosh. Know, thank you. I'm so impressed. I had a yeah, lot so that impressed I... with all your research. I know. I knew 
pretty much absolutely none of this honestly well thank so, you thank guys you for so listening much. and yeah we'll get back together next week with more kate what? and william on the patreon <laughs> i wonder if there's gonna be like any coincidences that are gonna happen what do you mean coincidences like you know when you posted the charles and charles and and camilla and then and the camilla, queen died the queen died <laughs> Which sucked because in the episode we were Ooh. like, the queen is never going to die. And then she did yeah. die. And then we just posted I the know. Nina and Ian and Nina got engaged literally the day of. So crazy. I know. I think there's been other things, too. So I wonder if sometimes there's going to be anything. Things are really things are really in sync with this show. Sometimes. I know. Yeah. Like you, <laughs> you seeing, um... Oh, why are Samantha Ronson? Yeah, Samantha Ronson. When you're researching <laughs> Samantha Ronson, like so weird. The world works in mysterious ways. <laughs> but especially with the royals, like now I'm nervous. Like there could be I know. something, especially since doesn't King Charles like have cancer or something? Oh God, Gay. That's yeah. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. That's really morbid. But like, <laughs> it's just. Oh, I don't know. Hopefully but, not. Hope. Yeah. Hopefully nothing bad happens. No. Hopefully, knock on wood. But, Maybe like Camilla yes. will get pregnant or something. Camilla, <laughs> my God, that would be truly a miracle. <laughs> Maybe Kate will get pregnant again. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, but. guys, thank you so much for listening, and yeah, more to come next week with this lovely couple. We'll get back together next week. Get back together next week. Is your heart filled with pain? Shall I come back again? Tell me.